Hello and welcome to Podcast 14.5b. This is part two of a two-part series regarding tornadoes. I'd like to go into greater detail regarding the tornado formation mechanism. On the screen you see three different formation stages. Let's focus in on stage A. What you need to notice here is that the winds aloft are much stronger than the winds near the surface. And you see that that causes a rolling motion in our atmosphere about a horizontal axis. In fact, that spinning along a horizontal axis almost looks like hula hoops being rolled on the surface. Now, when the winds are stronger aloft than they are at the surface, we call that speed wind shear. And that speed wind shear is a very important part in the tornado formation process. Now let's shift our attention to part B, because what we see occurring here are the very strong violent updrafts that can produce severe thunderstorms. Keep in mind that updrafts are warm, moist air that's rising rapidly and this rising air is what serves as the fuel for thunderstorm development. Now, these really violent updrafts can take that rolling motion shown in part A, which was the spinning along a horizontal axis caused by wind shear, and tilt it more vertically. So in part B, you can see that the strong thunderstorm updrafts are tilting that horizontally rotating air to a near vertical alignment. Then finally, if we focus our attention to part C, we have the development of what's known as a mesocyclone. The mesocyclone forms when that rotating column of air has reached a vertical alignment. Now keep in mind that a mesocyclone is a huge vertical cylinder of rotating air, and the mesocyclone can be up to 6 miles wide. Now if a tornado develops from the mesocyclone, it'll descend towards Earth's surface from a slowly rotating wall cloud in the lower portion of the mesocyclone. At this point, I'd like to briefly highlight some of the general characteristics of tornadoes. Tornado diameters can range from 500 to 2,000 feet, so they can range from fairly narrow to extremely wide. Tornado speeds can vary, but a good ballpark figure is 30 miles per hour. And when we say 30 miles per hour for their speeds, we mean the speed at which they move across the Earth's surface, not the wind speeds. Typically, tornadoes will cut a path of about 6 miles or so, although this number cited only applies to documented tornadoes. The real average path for tornadoes is unknown, but it's probably less than six miles on average. The maximum wind speeds for your strongest tornadoes can be over 310 miles per hour. And as a way to measure tornado intensity, we often cite the EF scale. Shown on the screen is the EF scale, the associated wind speeds, and the damage caused by tornadoes that fit that particular classification. Your EF zero tornadoes will have wind speeds between 65 and 85 miles per hour, and they will cause relatively light damage. Your EF1s and your EF2s can cause moderate and considerable damage, but as you work your way to the EF3s, the EF4s, and the EF5s, the wind speeds are getting much higher, and the damage associated with these tornadoes is becoming more and more extensive. The final consideration in this vodcast is tornado forecasting, and hats off to our hardworking meteorologists around the country, because tornadoes are difficult to forecast. It's very important that you know the difference between tornado watches and tornado warnings, not just for this class, but for your own safety and well-being. A tornado watch is issued when the conditions are favorable for tornado development. Tornado watches will typically cover a very large area of land, but they're issued to alert the public that there is a possibility for tornadoes. Now, when a tornado warning is issued, you should seek shelter immediately. Tornado warnings will be issued when a tornado is sighted or it's indicated on weather radar. And I'd like to stress once more that tornado warnings should be of immediate concern. Meteorologists rely on Doppler radar to detect air motion associated with tornadoes. We've come a long way in being able to warn the public when a tornado is approaching. Now it's very important to note that to estimate the most probable path for a tornado, a forecaster needs to know the direction and the approximate speed of the storm. And when meteorologists are able to piece together that data, they are capable of predicting a very accurate path for that tornado once it's on the ground. But just to summarize, a tornado watch is issued when the conditions are favorable for tornado development, whereas a tornado warning is issued when a tornado is sighted or it has been indicated by weather radar. Okay, that concludes this video podcast. In our final vodcast for Chapter 14, I will overview hurricanes, the most powerful cyclonic storms on planet Earth.